but we're only here temporary. We have a benefactor. Remember, the prophecies are the prophecies are true. He came to set the captives free. All in all, the prophecies are in past tense. All this was coded. It's all going to happen. Ain't none of it not going to happen. Well, so what you have to understand about dungeon program dungeon programming is is first it's not your fault. There is nothing you did to put you in the situation that you're in. It's the simulacrum. We are always, always blamed for our own ineptitudes. We are always blamed for our own lack of knowledge. We are always blamed for our own mistakes. But are they really mistakes when we walk through this dungeon of life and we make the wrong decisions? Sometimes I go through life and every single decision I made that day was the wrong decision. I go through days like that. But is it really our fault when the entire coded holographic universe around us is against us in everything? So dreaming, dreaming is not something I, I, I lend credit for. People tell me I had this dream is this. And I, I, you know what? I don't dream at all. I've had three dreams that I remember my entire life. I did a video about it. I explained it and I moved on. And I have never claimed ever, ever again to have had another dream because I don't. I don't dream. I don't know why. I, I, I've talked about it with friends and family. I just don't dream. When I go to sleep, I wake up. I'm done. I'm done. It's almost like I, I, I'm, I totally shut down. And when I was in prison, I was the exact same way. I slept like I didn't fear anybody killing me in my sleep. I just did. I mean, uh. The, I, don't, I don't understand why I am the way I am. I just figured whatever, I'm going to roll with the punches. Whatever happens is meant to happen. This is why I never struggle for anything. And I have many stories I could tell you of just phenomenal things that happened for me by not worrying about it. Just creating a mental, just creating a mental image of a problem and then addressing that problem verbally out loud and then making this decision out loud that I'm not even going to worry about it because this is what's going to happen. Somebody's going to come through with this. I'm going to find somehow this. Somebody's going to answer a bid and I'm going to be able to pay for all this. And every single time it happens, but never in the way that I, I want or predict. Yeah, man, it's very unusual. I mean, I got bills every single month, 12 times a year. I've got 24 periods of my life where I got I to gotta pay a bunch of bills and I've never not paid them. Even, even when I laid up in the hospital for 35, you know, well, actually, I was in the hospital for 14 days. COVID collapsed my lungs. I was in ICU. I did two videos about it. YouTube, it's the only video I have ever had taken down was my second COVID video when I named the medicine that they gave me in the hospital that within three hours had me out of the hospital. Couldn't believe it. 14 days, I'm talking about ICU, respirator, almost dead. Then finally, I moved up to Vapor Therm, stayed on Vapor Therm for two days. After after the Vapor Therm, I was on the uh, oxygen on 11 and 12, super high oxygen. Then I moved it down to 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. And then the day I left the hospital, I was already at the 3 and 4 range on my oxygen. Still couldn't breathe without it. I'd take it off, man. I'd start gasping. Uh, I was so weak that a, a I was so weak that I had to wait for a nurse to help me 11 feet to a toilet. Didn't even have the energy to get out of the hospital bed and and get to the toilet. So I passed out taking a sponge bath at the sink. I don't even remember what happened. I was just taking a sponge bath. Next thing I know, I was in the hospital bed and people were putting me back in the bed. The last sponge bath they let me take. So it was a uh, very unusual, very unusual. But you know what? Even during that period, all my bills were paid. And I wasn't even working. I was laid up. I was laid up 45 days after that. Yeah, I had portable oxygen tanks at home. It was, it was so crazy. So I had people sending me emails talking about I got I got irradiated with 5G, and uh, had me scared had had me scared of, scared of picking up a phone. And you know what? While I was going through all this, I started just creating in my mind. So what am I, why am I worried about all this? I know that many many years ago I set out to perform a mission, and that that activity of documenting all the historical stuff that I've documented, of analyzing all this prophetic material, of doing all the arithmetic, uh, uh, comparing historical dates. That was me not just creating an informed field, but acting on it. Every day I woke up in prison doing the same thing, same thing, just reading, researching, but it was different research every day, different books every day, but it built an informed field that was so powerful that by the time I got out of prison, that informed field collapsed. Quantum collapse was induced. And when it did, 
everything unfolded for me. I, I had access to all the materials that I needed to start. I started my, uh, uploading stuff to uh, social media, uh, YouTube, you know, the rest is history. Talking to you tonight. So, dungeon programming is what keeps you doing the exact same thing that you do every single day. Which, is, which, could, which, which creates a feedback loop. That feedback loop, because you are doing what you're doing every day, the simulacrum knits new reality tunnels that are basically patterned off past behavior from the day before. Because you're in this feedback loop, you begin experiencing the same emotions every single day. You're stressed. You're fed up. You're growing impatient. But you're not doing anything about it. You're not changing any patterns. You're not breaking pattern, which is very important. You continue to do it. So now the simulacrum is reinforced because what empowers a informed field? Emotion. So you, you've got your own informed field on a feedback loop. Now, every day, you're getting more and more emotionally charged because you're fed up with it. You're tired of it. The simulacrum has a mirror holographic effect. It's going to, it's going to reflect back to you as physical circumstances what you mentally project. And that's what you're doing. Feedback loop every day. Angry, frustrated, distressed and sad, and getting impatient, because you're doing the same thing day after day after day after day. So the simulacrum knits the same thing day after day after day. So you feel the same thing day after day after day. You're in a feedback loop ad infinitum and can't get out of it. This is why I released a video called Breaking Pattern. You got to, you've got to listen to that video. You've got, this is also my catchphrase. I've been saying it for years. Break free or die trying. That's what I mean by that statement. And I say it over and over and over and over in all my videos. Break free or die trying. My little catchphrases are all, 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 over face, all over Facebook. It's all over my archaic sigils, all that. Break free or die trying. You have to. Because the only way you're ever going to change the circumstances of your life is by doing something different. And as soon as you do something different, you're going to surprise the simulacrum. It's going to go into overdrive, which violates the principle of conservation of, uh, conservation of energy. Now it has to expend some of its energy trying to figure out what you're going to do. Because what I told you in the other video, the simulacrum cannot read the human mind. Why? Because we are actually immortals and that immortality gives us an armor. The only time the simulacrum can really try to figure out what's going on in the brain is when the immortal leaves. That quantum collapse episode when the immortal spirit is detached from the central nervous system is called REM sleep. During that period, the simulacrum is invading. It's in there. It's in your brain. It's going through all your neural synapses. It's trying to find the quarters. It's trying to figure out what this immortal is trying to do. It's that simple. It's just that simple. The brain houses data, but it's also a data processor. But the brain does not house the mind. The mind belongs to the immortal that's using the avatar. The simulacrum can control the avatar. It cannot control the mind. This is why we live in an information universe. An information, uni information that is controlled by the AI system. The AI system, Artificial Intelligence X, is the simulacrum. It is the very environment that it is completely surrounding us. It is a sentient biogram. It, 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 it watches every move, but the language it understands is actions. Because remember, Jesus said, faith without works is dead. That's really simple. Really simple.